Hi, good day, good morning, good evening, and good and welcome to another SAP community call. My name is Craig Schmeyl, and I am happy, excited, and pleased to be joined this time by Anya Schneider. Uh, Anya has one of the coolest jobs inside of SAP. She gets to work with all of our customers around innovation. And so we're really excited that Anya was able to carve out some time in her day to come on to the community call and, and talk to us, share a little bit with us and answer questions. So Anya, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And how are you? Uh, it's kind of a crazy time right now. Um, and our customers are, are all working hard and, and you're right in the middle of it. So how are you doing? Hi, Craig. Thanks for having me and uh, for inviting me uh, to the SAP community call today. I'm really excited to be here and uh, also hope that we will have an interaction action and a lot of interactive questions. So I'm doing great uh, because, as you said, I think I have one of the most beautiful jobs uh, at SAP uh, to work with customers, uh, to work with partners and see how our technology is being leveraged and how we can make the things happen and also how we can change uh, sometimes as well if processes and things are not perfect. So I take always the shoes and uh, the vision of the customer and directly try to change uh, whatever uh, needs to change. And uh, I think that is why I really like, uh, yeah, I like my job uh, here. And uh, so I like being here with, with all of you. And I think from a personal perspective, uh, I already talked to you in, uh, there is a lot of disruption right now. And uh, I also felt uh, the disruption already uh, this, this morning or this afternoon because we had the electricity here in the house. And uh, then uh, my husband just said, no, no problem. They will be uh, there in a time frame between now and the next five hours somewhere then. And I thought <laughs> they will definitely come when our community call is. But the good thing is sometimes no, are not happening and they were already here. So electricity hopefully will not be the problem. Perfect. Well, I'm glad that it's back on. I'm glad everything's good. And you have a few things to share with us first. So I'd like to turn it over to you to kind of dive right into your slides. Um, so please take it away. Absolutely. So, um, and thanks a lot. So I have a few slides. I will share a little bit about uh, what I have on my mind and also what I'm experiencing. And then I would love to, to hear your feedback and also where we need to drive additional change because um, so in, in my role, I'm part of, of Jürgen's leadership team and um, I take the shoes and the clothes and the perspective of the customers and the partners whenever we do a decision. We try to make that with full respect um, of um, uh, what is the outcome. And um, also talking a little bit about the, the disruption and this is the legal disclaimer, you need to uh, make sure that you know everything what is on this slide, but <laughs> right <laughs> now it was, uh, yeah, th the time right now is really um, reminding me as well of a concept where I was for sure a little baby in the 90s. Uh, and um, it was called the VUCA world and I'm not sure who is familiar of, of you with the VUCA world concept. It helps to classify and discuss a little bit the current situation as well. And also the, the sometimes the inability to, to grasp the world and to deal with the things that are just happening around us. And I like that concept because in the end, it is an acronym, SAP, we all love acronyms. So it is a four four number acronym, not a three number uh, ac uh, acro uh, acronym, um, difficult world, word. Uh, and it stands in the end for volatility, uncertainty, you see it on the slide, complexity and ambiguity. And um, I think the volatility, if we take this one, is the dynamics of change. So it's not uh, the dynamics of my ele electricity here and right now uh, in my house, but it's just take a look at the uh, dynamics of the oil market change and uh, with minus 321, minus uh, $40 per barrel. This is unseen historically and it's a dramatic change. And if we take a look and step back and compare it to what Gartner sees, and I was just with a with a call uh, with Gartner this morning, and uh, they they said that 80% of the product processes products uh, of the last decade they will be reinvented. They are completely blown away, and I think that is always what we need to keep in mind if we talk with customers as well as for our own stuff that we are developing. So that is the first uh, aspect, and the second one is the the aspect of 
uncertainty. And um, that's again a little bit the unpredictability of events. So 95% um, uh, of the Fortune 1000 companies are seeing a supply chain disruption um, from COVID-19. And I think that is also uh, what we see right now, a lot of interest in uh, stabilizing the supply chain and uh, what we can do uh, to make a stable supply chain and also what it means if it's not stable. And I think that is especially also affecting the enterprise. And it again relates back to my electricity. Sometimes things happen and you need to have another option. Um, and the third element is complexity. And the complexity is, uh, again, sometimes there is no simple cause and, and effect chain. It is just a, a number of things that are correlating. And uh, it is difficult then really to analyze the situation and uh, the system or whatever happens. And if you take a look at, and I think there was a Dynatrace survey uh, at some point in time, that a single web or mobile application crosses an average 37 different technology systems or components. And uh, I think compared, if you just go back six years ago, which is already a decade, um, then uh, you had only 22 systems, which was already, again, a lot of complexity. So we need to deal with that complexity as well. And the, the fourth one, and I'm, I'm, I'm quick with that, uh, it's also the ambiguity. So it's sometimes the question of, if you have a lot of data, it's a question of lack of clarity, how to interpret things. And um, if you have more and more data sources and media available, and uh, especially right now, it's the question, what is the right source of information and what to build uh, upon um, your, your final decision. And if we want to sum it up, um, all of those kind of VUCA world from, from the 90s, I think right now, especially and, and, uh, with the COVID world, we are in a perfect storm. And uh, that, that also leads me to the next slide because in the end, the COVID-19 uh, is, previously everybody was talking about digital transformation and the deadlock and everything. I think that is, in every, nobody's denying that. But uh, right now, I think that's just putting an accelerator for change and transformation on top of that. And what I'm hearing right now a lot out of my customer conversations is that on the one hand side, what counts is you need to be agile, you need to build up things in a fast way, you need to be ready um, uh, with solutions um, that are uh, there tomorrow, where you haven't known that there is a need for yesterday. And I have an example in a second. Uh, you need to have the right insights and in the end, everything needs to be business value driven. So it is no projects that are currently running, which are nice and which are uh, the icing on the cake. It needs to have either effectiveness or it needs to directly show the business value. And I think especially in, in, in that situation and, and coming to that agility and the insights, um, you were hearing a lot uh, about uh, now the Corona app in Germany um, and uh, hopefully all of the German uh, participants have installed it because it's great. Uh, but secondly, uh, prior to that, we also had that kind of recall action. So where we try to bring the foreign, foreigners, um, the tourists back to, uh, to Germany. And uh, we received that request to do that. Uh, I think it was six o'clock in the evening. And a um, um, colleague, uh, Helmut, called me and said, should we do this? And, uh, um, and I said, for sure, we should do this. Let's do it. And um, uh, then the entire chain and then Jürgen immediately reacted and uh, a team was built up overnight to build an application um, based on the cloud platform to make sure that there is a registration and uh, there is an opportunity to bring the people um, home and we have a safe database. And uh, I think that means agility inside. We did not know that before, but it was really something where I said, yes, we can do it. And that is also something which I'm seeing right now. It is about uh, that can-do attitude. And um, I think that is something that uh, we are all standing together. And But now let's, let's move on to the next one and take a look at the strategy. And I'm pretty sure that you have seen uh, the, the slides and also the, the keynote from um, Christian and, and, and Jürgen um, um, in the last couple of weeks during uh, the virtual Sapphire. Uh, it is for us really important that we make the intelligent enterprise happen. And for us, an intelligent enterprise is an enterprise where the integration works and where it's 
where we can adapt the things to the current needs. And uh, this is especially we are focusing along the processes and the data that they are integrated end to end. And especially also our uh, mega processes, uh, either it's lead to cash, it's source to pay or recruit to retire or whatever you take. Um, um, it is about a seamless user experience. It is about a one uh, inbox. Uh, it is about a reference architecture and aligned domain model where I'm pretty sure that uh, Jan spoke about it in the last community call. Uh, and it's about uh, bringing the things together uh, from a security identity management as well as wherever it is, we have a little bit of analytics embedded, but we also have it standalone. So the point is whenever we have uh, the, the application as such, we also have technology aspects underneath. And this is also something where we had a look at uh, when we reshaped uh, the technology strategy um, uh, a, a couple of months back or almost years back. So I'm now one and a half years uh, in, in the job with Jürgen, but 20 years with SAP. Um, but the point is, um, what is the role of, techno uh, of technology and why should we uh, drive technology um, uh, moving forward? And it is super important that we have on the one hand side a, a stable application and the processes, but we need to have a clear perspective on the technology and the technology use cases. And on that slide, and uh, this is where we came together then uh, to think through as a leadership team as well, we established uh, the business technology platform because we said that we wanted to drive technology to build agility, innovation and business value, but based on whenever there is a business process uh, in mind. And this is the key starting uh, area. So in the end, the business technology platform is a portfolio of integrated solutions and uh, in the end to turn data into business value. But what does it mean? Um, in the end, we have the four uh, elements and, and the four components. So we have analytics, so we have um, uh, analytics cloud, data warehouse cloud, for sure, as well as business objects. We have um, the, uh, the database and the data management uh, with a cornerstone around HANA on-premise and in the cloud. We have the application uh, development and integration, so the cloud platform. Um, next to it uh, with the integration suite and, and the uh, business process management. And we have as well on top of the platform, and I see that as an intrinsic uh, bucket, um, also the intelligent technology so that, that we automate, we learn, we have machine learning embedded, we have the data intelligence. In the end, it is a concept and a strategy. It is uh, a portfolio of, of tools and applications. There are development guidelines and there is an enterprise architecture available. Um, and uh, it all, what we are doing is characterized by three different qualities. We said we want to have a one unified platform to integrate the different solutions that are underlying. We want to have whenever we do, whatever we do with the technology, we need to have that business centricity. So there needs to be a use case for the customer. It needs to be close to the industry or uh, close to their business processes um, that, uh, that we are working and it's based on an open architecture. Um, especially that openness that is super important so that we can, um, we give our customers the freedom and flexibility to integrate as well other capabilities and components um, also from the hyperscaler world. Uh, so to make sure that we have always the best in class available. And just to the Corona app, I think open architecture was a super important element. And um, as well as um, sharing it uh, with the community in an early stage to also get the feedback from the community um, in, a, in an um, early stage and, and, and see where we are running and uh, if this is also resonating. Um, a quick one on how to start with the business technology platform. So in the end, uh, we see three core scenarios. On the one hand side, everything is centered around integration. So we have a harmonization of the data and the business processes. Um, we are taking a look at the APIs and how the things are, are coming together. And um, this is one of the starting points where you could start uh, with a business technology platform with a customer. Secondly, um, it is if you want to extend an application, either in the cloud, um, is it S4, uh, is it uh, Ariba or another uh, application, it is about to have a side-by-side -side extensibility concept and you can leave the core stable. Um, 
the next one is data excellence. So everything around uh, that we make sure that we put the different data sources together, that we have a, a joint streaming, a, a joint pipelining, no matter if it's SAP or non-SAP applications. And in the end, those are the classical three scenarios where you can uh, take a look at. And I will quickly flip through that slide. Um, and um, you can also see then uh, the links. There is a link to the integration white paper that was published uh, earlier this year. Uh, it is at sap.com, then cloud uh, slash integration, where you see also what is the roadmap for integration. And just recently, we also launched the integration suite. So to bring all of the different pieces in the platform together uh, that are driving integration uh, capabilities. And I think also, if I remember it, Jürgen uh, quickly uh, jumped uh, on the API Business Hub in the community call. So I also recommend for sure uh, to, to revisit uh, this call. He talked about the APIs and, and how the things are coming together. But this is a key, key priority. So I will take a look at so that there are also great scenarios available right from the beginning so that uh, we are delivering on that promise and we have examples. Um, I'm really proud that we already have a lot in the platform here, also with open connectors, um, uh, for instance, with a lot of pre-configured uh, elements. So there is much more that we, we can uh, deliver. We also have 1,400 plus um, pre-built integrations for SAP and non-SAP uh, environments. So we call it a little bit the Netflix for integration. Um, and uh, this is where we want it to be. So we want to provide all of that, um, uh, that uh, yeah, pre-configured content uh, so that we can make sure that we uh, have a full focus on what is the extra the customer wants because in integration, there's always an extra that you need to go. And uh, I think the next one, and then I'm jumping right in, in three customer examples um, uh, were because we also talked about uh, the value uh, discussion. I, I love the delivery hero story because uh, it is a perfect example for integration, extension, and also adaptability a bit. And you can read through all of the, the, the details. There is also a business transformation story with all of the facts available. We will make all of the links as, uh, as well available, but it started, I would say it started with a kiss a little bit, but uh, it is a very small company, 50 people, and they wanted to grow uh, the business uh, in, in the area of food delivery. And uh, they needed to have a stable backbone and they started with S4 um, and uh, they really want to make sure that uh, they have, uh, they are jumping over the homegrown back office system and have a strong core to grow uh, in a fast speed. I think right now they are around 20,000 um, employees and uh, they started with uh, the improvement of the capitalization workflow and uh, I think that especially went from a couple of days to have an investment workflow to down uh, to uh, just a few few hours and I think that is an immense benefit for a customer and that is always what we are looking for when we do something and if we are implementing and you see all of all of the different components that are used here so that there is also um, a kind of direct, what is the outcome for the customer? And um, if we take a look at the other one, uh, it is uh, a case around uh, integration and data excellence. So um, it is uh, the project uh, that is called Data as a Service Company um, that built um, uh, the so-called uh, Aristoteles application on SAP. Uh, in a way to encourage companies to fund the local renewable and affordable energies, especially in the emerging countries. And um, in the end, it was planned as an executive dashboard, uh, but um, the, the solution brings together technical uh, weather data, financial data, wind farm, solar park, biomass, a lot of different things. And it's built on the, 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 the cloud platform. It, lose, uh, it uses uh, analytics, machine learning, IoT capabilities. And uh, I think it is super, uh, uh, a super benefit and a value if we can have the numbers right now uh, with a 97% of accuracy uh, in uh, early failure of simulation of wind turbines, um, as well as the higher performance of the wind uh, farms. The last one I wanted to share, and then we start immediately with a, with a discussion, is uh, the Parkland Hospital. That is also a little bit uh, the, um, 
the, the, the calls of the day uh, when we received a call, especially in the COVID situation, it's one of the busiest hospitals in the US, it's based in Dallas, and um, they wanted to deliver uh, a better patient care, um, especially making sure that uh, the volume and the workflows are, are done properly. And they have invested in HANA, they have invested in the cloud platform, Analytics Cloud as well. And um, we integ integrated uh, a chatbot functionality in, in just a few days to really make sure that um, people who are there, uh, who are thinking that potentially they are um, um, uh, based uh, on a COVID sickness, so that they can also check some symptoms and then they get a guidance um, to really make sure that should I go to the hospital or not. And then also have uh, a lot of the data analytics um, and uh, the, the, the patient uh, capabilities then within uh, the hospital uh, streamlined. So to really make sure that uh, we have the self-service checker, but as well um, the decision-making within the, the, the hospital ready. And using as well Qualtrics for, for resource uh, tracking, inventory management. And we built that together with a, with a team of Parkland in just a couple of days. And I found that very impressive. And I wanted to, to stop with that because we are doing a lot of the projects with our customers. It's always the question where to start. And um, I'm not sure if, if you are familiar with um, also the concept and the institution of the app houses. Um, I really love them because not only because they are part of my organization, but there, there it's also that uh, a lot of customers are stepping in and saying, hey, um, how we have this problem and we wanted to solve it. And first and foremost, it is uh, separated the discussion from the technology. So we really focus on um, what is the outcome that we wanted to achieve. Uh, then we have the different phases of the human-centered uh, approach for innovation. You see that we, uh, we do a prototype very early. And the, the difference here is that we always wanted to combine it immediately with an enterprise architecture. And that is uh, that we wanted to make sure that we are not building in a design thinking approach something which is never being able to be implemented, um, but directly have the architecture and the, the setup of the customer in mind. And that makes us um, yeah, very, very successful in the approach. And that is what, what I wanted to scale even more, um, to always have in all of those different stages and steps, um, uh, an area where we can map what is the strategy of the customer, how it fits, how it fits from a technology perspective, also that we are not building something which is already on the radar um, of our products. And um, I think that is um, how I love to work. And uh, also um, whenever you here on the call uh, as community members see that uh, there is an interesting case um, and uh, you would like to get some guidance, we are around the world in different locations. We also have extended it with partners. So uh, I think we have a, a, a broad span. And with that approach, we are always testing also what are the boundary conditions of our technology, what is the boundary condition of our commercial models. And with a commercial model, I will, will stop because that is also something that we are always taking a look at commercial models from the perspective of uh, cloud platform enterprise agreement, bring a lot of flexibility to, to you as a customer, to the community overall, to make sure that um, it's just a contract that you need to do once and then you can get all of the services in the dashboard, you can immediately consume and you also see what are you consuming. And that is something that we are heavily driving as an organization to make sure that we ease the life um, and make business a little bit easier with SAP. And with that, you see, I could talk for hours, but I will stop now and listen yeah. carefully. And hopefully um, you have some questions. There are actually some questions already in. I actually got a couple uh, on a chat channel as well. So we've, uh, we've got a few of them. Um, I will start with the first one here, um, but I'm going to modify it just slightly and make it a two-part question for you. The first question is, what do you see as key SAP technologies to empower customers through digital disruption? Um, but I'm also going to take a step out of my own comfort area. I'm very comfortable on the technical side, but I'm very curious to add to this question, what are some of the key challenges our customers are actually coming to you with? Not necessarily a technical focus side, but from an overall process side, because 
I can imagine with everything that's going on right now, there's a lot of disruption and change on processes as well. So two part question, which key te technologies and which key challenges are customers facing? Thanks a lot, Craig, for uh, doing that separation because Elsa would not remember the first one. Maybe you need to help me, but I start and then you need to see if I'm on the right track. Um, but the first one, um, the key areas where I see a lot of investment right now is definitely on the platform. So with the cloud platform, I see a lot of investment in uh, analytics, also including planning. I think that is a major thing because right now, uh, if you could have planned for this, for sure, nobody could have planned for this. But right now you need to have agile decisions and agile decision making. So that is super important as well as uh, making sure that you can connect all of the data sources and you have the latest uh, uh, center of gravity with regards to your data because whatever you put uh, analytics on top, if uh, the, the foundation of the house is not uh, in a good position, you will not get uh, the, the feedback out. So it is around HANA, so the data strategy, how to bring the things together, SAP and non-SAP. And um, so there is uh, a lot of center of gravity, I would say, in, in those areas. And okay. maybe to the second one, what are the challenges customers are currently facing? Uh, it's definitely uh, that kind of resource constraints that you really need to focus on what is the essence that we need to, to manage right now. It's a lot about that efficiency perspective. Um, and the good thing is customers are, are really reaching out right now and asking for help in, in different areas. So it could also be that we are taking a look at uh, right now, it is uh, what are kind of financing options? Could you help us with uh, doing uh, uh, direct uh, de development together? So how could I, they ask for guidance. And uh, that is what I see. And I think that is also a, a positive thing um, because uh, that uh, gives us also the opportunity to interact and then uh, do a kind of stepwise approach with our customers to say, hey, this is what we are currently seeing. This would be the easiest way. And um, so to be in that close interaction with the customers. And um, I think going back into a stable mode and... Uh, yeah. Interesting, okay. Next question. The new work from anywhere situation brings lots of challenges and possibilities. Given that so many people work every day operating SAP systems or consuming its information, I see plenty of opportunities for SAP to empower remote work workflows for, for employees and their managers. Are you currently, currently looking into this opportunity area? I think especially the uh, and thanks for raising that question, especially the remote work and um, is a different one. And I think everyone is now realizing that it's possible. And uh, I think that is a good thing. Um, but especially the investment as well uh, into the, the workflow capabilities and uh, it, it, it does not need to be uh, pre-configured so we can directly do that um, on, on an instant base. That is a massive investment also what we are doing uh, out of the platform with the business process management um, and, and everything around that. So from a technology perspective, we are there. It is the question, what is the use case again? What are the starting points? And what we are currently doing and aside from the workflows as such, um, we are also doing a, a constant kind of pulse check uh, with, the, with the employees uh, as well to see what, how are you feeling, um, how can we better support and uh, then immediately also drive change. So we did that with, with the surveys and we, we called it the, the remote um, uh, workforce pulse checks and um, using also our own, uh, drinking our own champagne. Um, and. Um, I really like that because it is easy to be done and you immediately get a response and also the dashboard and you see what you can change. And we also started a lot with virtual happy hours with the connectivity needs to be there for sure. That's also, uh, if the infrastructure is not there, <laughs> it's difficult. You, you can work remotely, but it's um, uh, at a later point in, in time, you also need to have a connection. So it is, important and uh, I think there is a lot of opportunity and um, 
the technology again here is there, but we just need to see what kind of workflows you are thinking of. And uh, I'm pretty sure that we can build it on the platform. Excellent. So staying on the same tact of why this is necessary, um, you know, related to the pandemic, uh, the pandemic has already shifted the way we all do business by, you know, 100, 180 degree turn here. Um, with everybody pivoting to the online conferencing, fully remote work, the, the bigger demand for home delivery, you, you showed the customer the delivery hero. Um, how is the business technology platform helping these companies meet these challenges? I mean, it is a completely new world for a lot of companies. Um, you know, we see it from the little shops in the local towns to the bigger ones. How is the business technology platform helping? So let me start first with the technology and then we also go to the engagement because that's also a big change now, uh, how we engage with customers and partners and, and not driving there anymore, which I'm still missing a little bit. Um, but <laughs> it is um, the, the, the technology can help in many, many ways. Uh, either it's building uh, about a capacity dashboard on what is still on stock and uh, what are customers demanding right now, for instance, with an analytical solution. It is, on the other hand, uh, it is uh, building a kind of new application, uh, mobile connectivity application. Um, as an as an example to um, maybe order food or whatever uh, if you have a service um, and I think there are a lot of opportunities or the Rückhol app as an example with a um, which we build for for the German government to make sure that the tourists are, are brought back I think there definitely the technology platform can immediately help with the the cloud platform as the centerpiece to build something new, which was not there, but connect also the data sources that are already there, or to make an extension to a process uh, which was running prior to that perfectly, 100%, but now uh, really uh, yeah, is not stable and not active anymore. And I think that's always when, when there are changes, you need to react on something, you need to build it into a process. And I think that is also something where, where I see a lot of uh, the capabilities of integration, um, also of, of the, the Qualtrics data that we talked earlier. So if we have an HR process right now and uh, it needs to be adapted, we take the platform, we take a Qualtrics survey, we include it into the, uh, in the, into the process flow um, and we just change the process from there and uh, make things easier. And there you need to have the technology components into the, into the mix to do that. You need to have an integration platform, you need to have an extensibility capability, and that all sits front and center um, with the platform. Or another area as well is automation. We see right now, especially in the processes, uh, and there RPA plays a vital role, um, that some of the processes do not need to be directly handled uh, by a person. And uh, we build a lot of pre-configured um, uh, robots. Um, so to show use case scenarios where we can already be in some of the processes even more uh, effective because that is coming to my private life now again. I have the feeling I'm sitting there from eight o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the evening at exactly this place. And everything that could be um, everything that could be automated um, would be a wonderful thing. And um, there I love to have the support. And maybe now a second aspect, what we also see is we can't do any physical meetings anymore, but um, we have a lot of tools and engagements uh, where we can already do a lot of direct interaction with our customers. Also the design thinking workshops, we don't need to be in a physical location anymore. So we can do that directly online. Um, we are using tools like Mural, for instance, um, to do the design thinking sessions, to share content immediately with the customers and to come to an outcome. And so from this perspective, even in working with customers, there was not a real disruption in that, um, for sure, as long as the infrastructure is there and everything is stable. But um, I, I felt that this is also a positive notion. Um, as we, as you just went into the design thinking, uh, I'm going to take you back a little bit to the app house that you talked about. Um, 
I don't talk about it often, but I really find the concept and, and the actual execution of the app houses absolutely phenomenal. Um, they're, uh, they're utterly fantastic. I've been to four of them myself. So, um, which ones? Which ones? Uh, Palo Alto and I uh, was in the, um, the one here in Heidelberg. And then I was in, I don't know if it's actually an app house, but in Bangalore. Uh-huh. And then the other one was, um, it was, I think it was the app house, but I'm not 100% sure. So in Palo Alto, do we have two? We, we have, we have the app house and uh, then there is also the Hana house. So there That's are what it was, two the areas. House. The one is uh, in the city center next yep. to the Apple store and the other one is uh, in the SAP campus. Yep. And, and it was funny um, when I was in Palo Alto and I wanted to go to the Hana house, everybody, they didn't ask it when I asked like where to go. No one asked if it was the Apple store that I wanted to go to. They said, oh, you're going to the Hana house. They immediately thought about it. So the Hana house and the app houses are the two things that I find really cool because for me, it's where community really comes together. And I think that's a brilliant thing when we can see that, especially in the live interactions. But I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how the app houses have adapted to this new crazy way of working. Yeah, and um, it, is, it is a very interesting thing and um, because um, I'm encouraging the team every time so that we um, yeah, are sharing as well um, the, the great things that uh, we are doing across the world uh, in our app houses. And as mentioned, we have different five different app houses uh, around the, the, the area. Right now we are celebrating the fifth anniversary of the App House in Korea. So we have one location there in South Korea. Um, and uh, as well the mentioned one uh, that, uh, that you shared uh, with us. And um, there for sure it is the people, it is the place, uh, it is also the methodology, it is about uh, the leadership. And if the place is not there now, anymore. It is the question, how, uh, how could you transfer that spirit uh, in a virtual setup? And um, it is really great. And the, the team built up uh, that kind of digital engagement model to directly work with the customers to do, as mentioned, the, the design thinking sessions uh, in a virtual setup. So it is immediately shared. Everybody's looking at the same stuff. Um, and um, sometimes I have the feeling that it's now even more focused because you can have the meetings a little bit shorter, um, but with a, with a great outcome. So we are still running even uh, the, the only app house location, which is right now reopened is the South Korean one uh, because we have our o overall lockdown for sure, which is also impacting the app house as part of our facility concept. And uh, so it is, it is really, and, and Constance is writing, it's we have uh, ad adapted to the new normal. So there is also some tools. We have a virtual innovation kits available. Uh, there is an innovation culture toolkit. So there is a lot available that you can do virtually. And I don't see any projects stopped right now um, due to that um, uh, COVID situation. The only thing which is stopped is the entrance uh, of the app house as such as a physical location. So the spirit continues, which is fantastic. I, I think that's that's absolutely brilliant. I have a lot of community members talk about their experiences at the App House uh, when I meet with them. So it's always fun and exciting to hear more about them. Uh, five years. Um, I had I didn't realize five year anniversary. Fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Um, more questions are coming in. Um, I've got some on this. I've got multiple screens here. I've got some on this screen. Um, so. Uh, kind of a, a more pessimistic view here, um, but with an optimistic, hopefully, outcome. It is very likely that we may experience a second wave of this horrible pandemic that we're, we're all stuck in. How is SAP set up to help customers with rapid innovation and digitalization in a remote or virtual manner to help them address and adapt to new business conditions? We've talked about pieces of this in, in general, but do we have, do you have from the customer innovation perspective, a specific set of, of actions that you're ready to help our customers with that you could share with us? So basically, uh, on, on the one hand side, we try to make uh, the, the entry barrier to our technology always uh, very low. So to make sure that um, we have 
trials complete in in the web available we make them all condensed in a in a central area um, but this is this is just one area and we have already uh, launched a lot of um, also free capabilities um, at the website um, for for customers to directly uh, use and choose um, but on the other hand uh, we are taking a look at uh, what needs to be changed in half a year from now. And I have the feeling, and, and we are heavily investing into uh, full digital capabilities as well for SAP so that we are storing uh, documentations and information at a central place so that uh, we are sharing code artifacts and we are sharing guidelines in a central area so that you do not need to jump through different areas. So I really want to come to a vision where we have a full digital engagement for everything that we are doing. And this is what we are pushing hard right now um, to make sure that we have all of the aspects of the technology first uh, in, in central places available um, and also make the consumption of the technology easier. Because if we think through that uh, the situation stays like this and hopefully there is no second wave, but we can be stable in that situation where we are, there is no travel, there is no big uh, uh, kind of uh, perspective uh, that we are meeting uh, a lot of customers or communities on site. So we need to strengthen our capabilities in the digital space. And that is what, what I'm pushing hard for, to have digital engagement models, as well as for our own capabilities with the App House, uh, as mentioned, I really try uh, to make uh, use of what, what we are sharing uh, with the innovation approach with customers that we are using that as well our, uh, on our own. Uh, and uh, as well that uh, we continue to work on customer scenarios and we get a lot of feedback and requests uh, on how to use the technology now in the recent times with a lot of projects, um, uh, either in the inventory optimization, in there is a new tax thing that is coming up, all of the things that are happening in parallel to COVID and we can all do that online. And I think that is what I'm keep on pushing and that we are also being better in a full digital experience and that is for sure a, a journey. And, um, but I'm pretty sure that we can do it right as well, also with your feedback and with your support uh, of the SAP community. And, and you kind of actually answered part of a question that just popped up um, is, how can we do these types of design thinking and everything remotely, which you were just addressing? Um, another part of this question though was, are you able to share um, in terms of, of numbers of how many clients and partners are embracing design thinking methodology in general? I mean, everybody that goes to the app house is of course doing this, but do we have any broad numbers that are shareable? Oh, we have a lot of statistics uh, of uh, many, many uh, customers and, and workshops that we are doing. And uh, I don't have it on top of my mind, but it is uh, thousands of customers uh, that are running through our app houses uh, over and over again. But it is not the point that uh, it necessarily needs to happen in an app house. It is uh, the approach sometimes. Uh, it makes sense to, to have the full scope and to run through in a project from the very beginning, from the user research um, and uh, until a run and scale phase. In other areas we, uh, where the scope and everything is already very fixed and clear and 100% uh, uh, set in stone, um, we also start immediately uh, with the implementation um, of the technology. So I think it is a question of, is everything already baked out and uh, all of the RFPs and all of the pre-work has been done? Um, or if uh, we need to have uh, a little bit more uh, of the stakeholder buy-in and, and also having a, a subtle kind of research being done before we go into the implementation. In most of the cases where we are not only doing direct technical impl implementation, but taking a look at the entire circle from uh, the ser research, from the design, uh, from the prototyping, and then uh, into a run and scale phase, those are the, the projects which are um, in many cases the ones which uh, are more sustainable. Uh, and then we see that it grows from there. 
So in some cases, we see that uh, technical prototypes are built very easily, uh, but then they never make it to life. And then we ask ourselves, why is this the case? And uh, this is why I, I really see that the methodology as such is not needed to be done in the app house as uh, uh, per se, um, but we can do a lot of that uh, in different um, aspects. And, and But I just want to extend that offer uh, that whenever you have uh, uh, an idea uh, that you would like to work with us, um, that we are open uh, in our uh, in our approach. Uh, so let us know. And by the way, I think you also mentioned uh, in India. Um, in some cases, we are also running the app houses um, in an area uh, where uh, the partner is running the app house, mm -hmm. uh, which is also a good perspective so that we are expanding the network and also expanding the knowledge to partners uh, so that uh, they can really uh, uh, do the same kind of methodology and um, also the, the combination of design thinking and the enterprise architecture. That is what I'm currently really taking a look at so that we are combining those elements um, and uh, going up the, 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 the scale with the customers. Fantastic. So we, we are coming close on time. We're down to the last uh, five, six, seven minutes or so. I have a question here. It's, it's a very lengthy question. Um, and it starts off, uh, SAP is becoming better on working with startups, especially through SAP IO. And we do have uh, your, your colleague, Max Vesselman, going to be doing a call in the near future as well. Um, but startups are resource scarce and there are currently no ways for them to use SAP Cloud Platform to build prototypes if they're not paying customers. It would be amazing to have a free tier to enable such use cases and it would make SAP very attractive as the technology platform for every startup. Do you see startups as possible customers and partners for whom you would consider giving a such a step. And I can imagine this extends beyond just the startups, smaller businesses and things like that. So from a customer innovation perspective, um, can you go into detail a little bit on how we're helping to provide? Yeah, and, and Craig, that is exactly addressing the point where we are constantly taking a look at that we wanted to lower the entry barrier to SAP because sometimes uh, we, we are seen then as, oh, this is uh, the big monster and uh, you do not uh, want to, to tackle the big monster and we are not. And uh, so we have a lot of, um, we, we have a lot of um, opportunities to, to work with startups, either on the one hand side to extend our portfolio. And uh, we brought as well uh, some of the startups uh, to the floor, uh, which are now uh, even uh, not the unicorns anymore, but uh, stable businesses. Just think of, um, just uh, think of uh, Celonis as an example. So uh, we worked with Celonis at the very beginning, and uh, said there is a great uh, perspective of. Um, adapting uh, uh, our current portfolio and extending it. And then we can easily also do that uh, with startups. But the point is, and that is what I really like, uh, that uh, we are taking a look at um, how we can support the startups in different ways. And we are working, as you mentioned, with SAP IO very heavily and um, to see either how we can support them with their business model, with uh, the kind of uh, perspective of how could, uh, is there a business opportunity uh, or is that a one-off and um, and also taking a look at how we can provide uh, our technology to the startups and um, there is also there are also uh, entry um, offerings for startups and uh, I think that is also something that we can share um, uh, in in the next one or I will also ask Max um, uh, to include that into his session uh, as a starter, because um, he is very, yeah, as well a dear colleague uh, to push that forward so that uh, we ease the entry barriers. And by the way, we also take this feedback of the startups very seriously. So, how, what needs to be improved uh, um, in with the platform, and uh, what are the needs uh, of a startup? Thank you. Um, all fantastic information. Uh, we are at. Five minute time, and I wanted to be able to give you an opportunity. Um, the community is here, uh, one, for SAP to be able to give to the community, but also because the community likes to give back to SAP. Um, from a community perspective, um, is there something that the community could be doing 
um, to help in these times that, that to help make SAP more aware? Um, is this something that we, a call to action that we can give to the community? Um, there, the massive knowledge that's there is just, is, is unimaginable half the time. Um, and they're, they're always asking, how can we help SAP? So is there something that you would like to see from the community? Thanks for opening this up. And uh, I would love to get your feedback, especially on that. If you think about a full digital experience, how would that look like? So what are your wishes in, into this? And what are also your ideas? What are your obstacles? And uh, would love to, to get uh, the direct fresh feedback uh, from, from your examples and your daily life. And we are trying to simplify wherever we can. And uh, we just launched uh, the, the SAP for me for customers. So to have all of the information at a central point, which is already a, a, a great example for, for simplification. But I think there is much more. And uh, this is uh, what, where I would love to get your feedback on, especially if we are investing now into uh, more and more digital engagements and making access to technology in a digital way. Yeah, provide me with your feedback and I'm pretty sure that uh, you will hear back from us and uh, we, we try to incorporate uh, your feedback wherever we can. All right, well, community, you have heard. All you have to do is speak up and let us know. We are interested and ready to take action when possible, so. Fantastic. Anya, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you have an extremely busy schedule and uh, it's exciting for us to have you here. And I hope you will come back and join us again in the future for another call. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Craig and team. And bye-bye to the community. And I hope to see you soon. And whenever you have a great idea of whatever it is, of a customer example, of a partner engagement or whatever you have, just uh, drop me a note. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. All right.